moving Uber, by the way. I was just on, saying on back that, of Lyft. Yeah. That's going to catch a lot of people's attention. It's a much bigger market cap. Much bigger market cap. I mean, that's where I was going to start on the Lyft one, uh, Mike, as to whether this is going to be good for Uber or bad for oh, the, Uber. The immediate takeaway is more rational competition is happening in this market. At least that's by Lyft's you know, guidance. Well, you, uh, which is true when you get better revenue per user and sure. the pricing metrics helping. But that's not just where they beat expectations seeing average uh, active riders gain 41 percent year over year and ahead of expectation as well, which might be at the expense of Uber, remains to well, be seen. Well, I, I, it remains to be seen. I mean, I do think you have to basically look at Roku and Lyft numbers and say, oh, maybe investors are going to fall back in love with disruptive tech players that are going uh, into these massive addressable markets and, and everybody can win for a little while. Um, obviously, you know, uh, these stocks, Lyft and Uber, have been under some pressure. They're below their highs and all the rest of it. Uh, so I do think uh, right now it's going to be a pleasant surprise on the, after a day Lyft like is, today. Lyft is beating substantially substantially lowered uh, yeah. expectations because they blew it last time. And if you right. look at a stock price, it's round tripped. So today is fun if you're long, but if you've been long, you're like, all right, that's great um, because you really haven't gone anywhere. On the opposite side of the coin, if you've been long Roku, you've been a big oh, yeah. winner. I mean, this yeah. is a stock up 112 percent in 12 months. The run up to earnings up 56 percent in three months and yet popping 5 percent on another big beat. Internet what do they, what do, they do? Is this is fake meat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> of some sort. And this is the streaming play, right? Exactly. This is this is what benefits. Well, ask Wilford; he owns like six of them. Three, but but yeah, I think it's. A, I don't want to get into the bias area because I think it's a great consumer product. But look at the numbers: active accounts up forty percent year over year, adding just one point four million in the quarter alone, up to thirty point five, and average revenue per user is growing very fast as well, twenty seven percent. And it is the way to play Ford belief cutting. in uh, yeah. OTT services without having to pay up for really expensive content and have right. terrible cash flow. Because I was, was going to say, like, if you if you think the cord cutting trend is just getting started and it's going to get bigger, you don't want to short the cable companies because that's got a negative carry. They pay huge dividends. This is a better way to go. This is a company offering an alternative, and the consumer clearly uh, is in love with it. So. Jason, just I know you, you can't talk specific stocks, but in general, the appetite right now for disruptive companies, tech companies, new IPOs like an Uber and a Lyft, if they continue to prove themselves here with public re reports, there haven't been that many of them. But what yeah, does it say I mean, about the environment and, and what is the appetite? Well, listen, I think that uh, it's very difficult to buy your traditional cyclical stocks, I think, given the fact that the U.S. economy is slowing and you have so much macro uncertainty, whether it's regarding trade or whether it's the Fed. So it's, it's become cliche now, uh, but in a TINA market, what works are high dividend paying stocks and very high and very grossy stocks. And, and it seems to me that's going to be likely going to be the prescription uh, until something changes, until you have maybe an all clear uh, from, uh, from trade. But that doesn't seem to be imminent. So it, I, I, wouldn't stand in front of, I wouldn't stand in front of any of these stocks right now.